Hey, Urza Master fans, we are back finally with some tech stuff today. I'm very excited about this. This is a home TV analog transmitter station. This is to send RF TV signals just like you used to get on your CRT TVs back in the 90s. Uh, and with the VHS signal or VHF signal on here, you should be able to pick this up, I believe, on about channel 7. Um, we might have to fine tune that a little bit, but this does both uh, AV input and HDMI input, and you can signal select that to however however you want to code that out to RF. Um, and I believe you can actually input from one to the other, but we're not going to use that functionality at all. But let's get this unboxed, and this just hooks up with a USB-C. Very interesting that this is packaged from ViewSonic. That's uh, one of the CRT monitor brands I bought a couple of back in the day. And of course it comes with this lovely little retro looking antenna that you just screw into the board here. Uh, everything is USB-C powered. Um, I'm not going to pull the shielding off of this just because I, I don't want to break it. But you can kind of see in here a little bit. So let's get it out of the Mylar packaging take a look closer at it here and what we'll do is we're actually just going to hook this up to my computer uh, and then broadcast hopefully from that to um, one of the CRT TVs here in this room so let's check it out. All right so here's everything out of the bag. Uh, this is just a die cut faceplate. On the back here's the actual PCB. You can see we've got a couple of you know, looks like just your basic small form factor ICs, a couple of capacitors, you got your IOs, your display panel here, some dip switches, and obviously typical electronics you'll see on a PCB. So everything's USB-C powered, 5 volts, uh, so we're just going to power this with the USB 3 on my computer. Uh, now to do the HDMI to RF or the HDMI to AV out, you put K1 and K2 to the right. So I'll go ahead and toggle that now. And that basically just tells the board, you know, hey, we're not taking this input signal and broadcasting it to RF. It should be HDMI and that probably simulcasts to this AV out, but it should also output to RF. So technically you could have a monitor, I believe on both channels. Uh, now it does have some dongles up here that probably have some functionality. Not totally familiar, um, so I'm hoping this is mostly plug and play. But what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and get the HDMI for my monitor 2 here plugged in. Uh, we'll power it up, get the antenna screwed in, and hopefully we can get this broadcasting. Okay, so just as a temp test setup, we've got this connected up with monitor number two. So we're going to go ahead and just wake up the computer here. You can see we've got a library of pending rebrand videos here. So if you're a fan of Urza Master, me, you can head over to pending rebrand and subscribe for all of our podcast content, some of which I'm going to try and broadcast on this analog transmitter. So K3 here will give us power on. We're set to HDMI out. Transmitting at 471.25 megahertz on RF on a UHF band. So let's go ahead and turn on a TV and see if we can pick it up. All right, so just out of convenience here, next to monitor two in our TRS-80, we've got this uh, higher brand TV. We'll tune it to just over the air. Let's go ahead and see if we can just scan the over the air channels and see if that picks up here. In the meantime, while this is scanning, let's go ahead and power up a CRT TV and see if we can navigate to this on something a little older. This is the Philips CRT you may recognize from other videos. We'll go ahead and power this up and hopefully 
we can pick up a broadcast signal on the old over-the-air tuner here. Channel one, two, three, four, five, six, and that's seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, All right, we've cycled through 20 channels here, so we might have to fiddle with our settings. Okay, so we played around with this a little bit, and I think I might have figured it out here. I think this was set to PAL signal. Um, I think the PN there is PAL NTSC, so I switched that to NTSC, so N. Uh, I also switched it from UHF to VHF uh, at 85.25 megahertz. I did adjust this SIF rating down to 6 megahertz. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to make a difference, but I'm still not picking it up on the channel I've set on the CRT TV and uh, nothing here on our higher, but let's go ahead and let it just scan through the analog channels. It does actually give you the option to skip it on this TV. While that's scanning, let's go ahead and try it on our Philips CRT. Okay, so we got channel six, five, four, three, two, one. So nothing in the first six channels. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12. Not even any interference, so um, let's play around with the settings some more. All right, so after much fidgeting, uh, I was able to find an RF frequency chart and match up a channel with a frequency, and at 647.25 on UHF, we're in business. We've got analog broadcast TV. Let's double check this channel on our CRT. All right, on our Philips, let's navigate to channel 43. We've got a ways to go because we're on channel 10, so bear with me. The one thing I will say is that um, it's not transmitting any audio right now, but it does have that capability. So we're going to have to try actually transmitting the audio from the computer through the HDMI. Um, all right, so this is 43 on this old CRT, and it is not picking up that signal. Gonna just run it a little higher. And it seems a little bit unlikely that the transmitter wouldn't make it this far. I'm four feet across the room, so or maybe six feet across the room. So it could be that. The frequency just doesn't play well on this TV, or it could be that on this TV the calibration is just a little different. So let's see if we can get the menu. Auto program again now. So we get noise when we're on broadcast. It does seem to be picking up something. So when it goes blue like that, I assume it means it's picking up some kind of a signal. We do still have signal, and it's a very steady image broadcasting on the much more modern TV. This one did trip on 43 there. It turned blue for a second, although it turned blue on like four other channels, which is, I think, to, it's got to be impossible. And there's 43. We got a very brief little image there. Extraordinarily weak signal. We do seem to be getting a little something though. And I believe it's because we've got color bars right now. So let's let's try and reset that. 
Okay, so we've got color bars because the computer went to sleep. And now when we navigate back, we've got a good picture on this version. And on the CRT there, you can see we've got signal, uh, but the picture is extraordinarily weak, barely coming through. All right, so the good news is we've got signal coming through, but we're on a UHF frequency. So I'm going to just convert this to VHF and just see if we get any change. Now I know switching it to VHS, or excuse me, VHF means we're going to have to navigate to the right channel again, but we're going to give that a shot here. Okay, so we switched over to VHF and now we've lost it on the more modern television, the signal. Um, this is a lower band frequency. Um, now the output on this, it, it's just a little goofy. You'd have to have a real fine tuned receiver, I believe, to bring it in properly. Uh, and I don't have anything with bunny ears, so <laughs> we're just going to have to kind of adjust this as we go. But I should be able to pick this up on channel 7 or so. And as you can see, we've got essentially nothing on channel 7. But when the computer goes to sleep, we get a no signal uh, black and white bar on channel 7 on the more modern television. So if we wake the computer up, now we get a signal on channel 7. Uh, unfortunately, it's all in black and white, so we actually get no color band on the VHF, which is... Uh, interesting okay so we've adjusted back to uh, UHF signal at 519 and a quarter megahertz and we've got a nice clear color picture um, I'm not sure what the SIF means uh, and I'm not a TV expert but it comes prepackaged at six and a half I'm just wondering if that's going to improve at all our video signal in it does not. I have to do a little research on exactly what that is, but this is channel 22. So we're going to try this in the CRT and just see if we get any image. Uh, but the good news is at least we've got this going. Okay, so on 22 on the CRT across the room, we do actually get a little bit of a signal there again with no antenna hooked up. That's probably why. Um, but it's promising because we actually do get some kind of a signal. Okay, so the last question I have on this is, can we submit audio through this HDMI connection? Now, currently, I had this muted, but with the mute off, you can hear we've got kind of a interference sound. So nothing really coming through except that video carrier signal. Um, but you can see... You can actually see my mouse movement. So if I can locate the mouse here, I'm just going to go ahead and try and play a video source. Something short. Okay, so the source file we're playing right now, uh, video comes across really nice, really good picture. Um, but my question is, can we transmit audio? So on the computer, I'm going to just change my sound output here and let's see about getting that output. Okay, so I don't think through HDMI, at least through the computer, we're going to be getting any audio, but we know we get a nice clean video signal, at least for uh, RF output. So we'll have to try this in a part two to get some video with audio playing. And I think we're going to go ahead and just try that from our RCA. But uh, very cool. 